So a while back I got a comment from someone saying that I needed to dust my desk. Well, I just want you to know that I dusted it and the reason why I don't dust my desk is because it almost killed me. What do you take me for? A guy who does house chores? Hey guys, we are diving into new territory. Well, at least for me, I have a power supply to review. Um, yeah, I haven't really done a power supply before, so this is going to be fun. But no, I have a nice looking unit from Enermax, and it is the Revolution Duo. It's a 700 watt gold unit, and it looks pretty nice. And I think it's going to hold up fairly well for us, but we're going to have to, to test that out in a little bit. So yeah, we'll take a closer look, but the important thing to know about this guy is the fact that what it's doing is it's using dual fans to help keep temperatures cooler within this unit. Let's take a look at that, take a closer look, look at some testing, see how well this guy measures up. Okay guys, so I think there are two types of PSU reviews that should happen. There's the ones that you know, Johnny Guru do, Johnny Guru does, and then, well, everyone else. So <laughs> I guess I'm going to be in the everyone else factor. So, you know, I wish I could do a technical type review, but it, the amount of equipment stuff that you would need is obviously a lot more than I can afford right now. So we're going to have to do more of a practical level PSU review. That said, I do see, though, a really good purpose to a practical review where rather than trying to push every limit of the PSU, we do a little simple showing of, hey, if you are planning to use your PSU in this safe manner, then you can probably expect these kind of results. So that's what we're going to do today. So I'm not going to worry too much about pulling it apart and opening all that stuff. There's a lot of research and stuff involved that I do not have the time to figure out because, well, life has been super busy. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at this guy and see what we got. So first off, we can see the outer shroud. We've got a black, just a typical kind of a matte black shroud. It's not gonna really show much along the lines of fingerprints. Enermax logo right here on the um, top fan looks nice. So um, we've got our 700 watt gold uh, Enermax Revolution Duo. So very clearly on the side in silver, so it won't clash with any build if you do see the PSU. Now this thing is designed to be under a shroud though, so you probably won't even see that anyway. But, you know, who cares? You might, who, who knows that you're gonna have a shroud. So if we flip this guy around and just kind of look at the top here, you can see that we've got all of the specifications right there on the top. Very easy to read, very easy to see, so I like that. Um, I'm going to kind of angle this thing around to the back now. And yes, I'm being extremely risky because my computer's running while I'm doing all this. I don't know. Am I crazy? Stupid? Daring? I don't know. I'll let you decide. But on the back here, we can see we got our switch, our plug-in, our small exhale fan here to help with that dual airflow. Here we've got the little knob that you can turn and it'll move, it'll change the speed on that fans to higher or lower depending on how much noise slash cooling that you want. So yeah, not a bad little PSU unit. Looks nice on that end. Let's look at these cables now. So Enermax has this kind of white and black sleeving. Uh, somebody thought I had tarantula legs in one of my computers while I was while I was testing out before I had really put things away. And nope, not tarantula legs, just the cable sleeving. But I actually like this. It looks nice. The thing I don't like is right here at the end of the connectors. And as you can see, this is just, you know, I can grab some more cables and we're still gonna have the same problem here. And it's, and it's just the fact that we've got this colored wire showing at the ends. And I really do not like that. I'd like to see that completely covered, even if you're using colored wire, because, you know, I get it, quality control. If you're using all black wires, even though that'll look nicer, you could end up having wires getting mixed up easily and you could, you know, damage systems because of it. So I understand why you wouldn't do that, but there's a way to, to extend the connector or find a way to make the heat shrink come up closer. I really like those colors to be gone. So that's kind of a, and I've seen other cables starting to do that, looking nicer. And I get that there's a little bit of controversy there, but overall I want nicer looking cables. And let's talk about the other important factor about this. So if I angle this guy up here, you can see here 
that we do not have any modular connectivity. All of our cables are just hardwired in, and that's a huge mark against this unit. Personally, I believe that any power supply that's gold rated should at least be semi-modular. And the only cables that should ever be hardwired in, especially in a gold rated or up unit, is the 24 pin and the CPU. Those are the only two cables I ever want to see hardwired in. Because even with a graphics card connector, you may not always use that. But you're pretty guaranteed to use your CPU and your 24 pin. So I just, this is a 700 watt gold rated unit. I really feel like Enermax should have gone with the modular route on this. So that's, that's to me is kind of a, a bummer. Because if you're not using all these cables, where are you gonna put them? Now, granted, if you have this in a PSU cover, you have a little more room, but still, I hate I hate having to do stuff with this cables. I want I want these gone. I want these to be out of my case when I'm doing my build. So that's that's the only downside to this. I do, I but other than that, we got a really, really solid looking power supply. So let's go ahead and move on to some testing and see what we can find out about, about this unit there. Okay, so now we've finished our closer look, let's talk about first a little bit how I tested this unit. Then of course, I'll go into the testing results and then we'll wrap this guy up with a conclusion. So first off, um, I do not have super high-end equipment to do a super extensive PSU stress test and, and make sure that I'm hitting all the proper levels and stuff. I've looked into that and there is like, can literally be thousands of dollars of equipment just to properly test a power supply. So we're gonna just do a very practical test. So what I did is I went ahead and swapped out all the connectors and put this guy on my desk and used a simple multimeter. And all I was doing was really checking voltage regulation. I wanted to do ripple as well, but my budget isn't going to let me get a, a reasonable USB oscilloscope just yet. Now, in a little more time, I'll be able to probably put one of those guys into my testing methods as well. But it's still not going to be the kind of level of quality oscilloscope that you would get from somebody like, well, you know, Johnny Guru. So we're going to do the best we can with what we got. So what I did do, though, is I went ahead and I put this thing into my system. Now I mentioned in the overlook that this is gonna be very practical. And the reason why I say that is, if I've got a 700 watt PSU, I would not recommend using that for a 700 watt system. Typically, if you have about a 500 watt system, you'd wanna go, you know, about 25% of what your power need is to be nice and safe and in a good comfortable range with your power supply. So. I have in my test bench here, I've got an i7-7700K. I have an R9-290 um, graphics card. I've got 3200 megahertz RAM. I got a couple of disk drives. I've got some LEDs. I got some fun stuff in here. I did a power, cal uh, power, uh, power supply uh, calculator online. And I, that'll be a, there'll be a link to that in the description below so you can see my full test setup. And my my system usage was but just, just a little over 500 watts. I think it was like 515 or something. So with that, I think that's like an ideal amount of system load to go for a 700 watt power supply. Now, if my system was running about six, 700 watts, I might be wanting to go closer to a thousand. If I was running a thousand watts, then I'd be preferring a 1200, 1300 watt power supply. So that's what I mean. This is gonna, that's why I think that this will be just an extremely practical, if you have, if you have about a 500 watt system, then I think a 700 watt power supply is gonna fit your needs perfectly. So voltage regulation, I measured the 3.3, the five and the 12 volt rails. And the first thing I did is I went ahead and kept the fan on the low speed. And measuring out the voltage, I mean, I had less than a percentage of fluctuation on every rail. I mean, my five volt rail, it stayed rock solid. I went from like 5.05 to 5.06 volts change, changes in voltage between just a idle, idle load and then running like a full PSU burn test from OCCT. So, just hardly any fluctuation. And then looking at the 12 volt rail, I went from like around a 12.29 to a 12.34 
from idle to load. So just just minor, minor, minor amounts of fluctuation. I think the most I had was almost a percentage point off of the 3.3 volt rail. So it seemed to me that the regulation was doing well with what I would consider an average gaming workload from a PC. So if you've got about 500 watts worth of equipment and you're running your normal gaming loads, it looks like this unit's gonna do fantastic there. Now, I also went ahead and measured the, the voltage regulation under full fan speed and to see if the cooling would make any difference. And aside from like a hundredth of a volt on the 12 volt rail, I didn't see any difference. Everything came out exactly the same, which made me feel better because at least it seemed like my testing was consistent. And so, which is what I wanted. So yeah, not too bad. The last thing that I really wanted to check was this dual fan setup. So when you turn this guy all the way up to high, as I'm doing right now, it gets, you can hear some noise. It's not particularly loud, but you do, you do hear it. I got 47 decibels from my little phone app tester, which in, in my experience up to about 45 is audible, but not too terribly bad. Um, 50 is when it starts getting a little bit at my, my cutoff point if I really don't want to be annoyed by the noise. Now that said, I never felt under any amount of load that I was putting on this unit, I never felt hot air just coming out the back. And honestly, without a good, without a good thermal temperature that I could, like thermal sensor that I could stick inside the unit and measure temperatures, I don't, I don't know how well I could have, could have measured that otherwise. That said, I gotta say that the duo fan setup, I feel like maybe if you're stressing out this power supply a lot and you've got it in a shroud, then the dual fan's gonna benefit you. Outside of that, I, I don't really see a huge advantage and that's just being perfectly honest. Now, the dual fan would bother me if I couldn't control the speed. The fact that Enermax included that switch means that I don't have to hear the noise and two fans do seem to be keeping it nice and cool. So all around testing wise, I think this unit is going to do you do very well. Um, as far as, you know, mythic levels of performance, I can't say much about that. But on a practical level, I do not think that this is going to be a bad power supply for your system, especially if you're playing it safe with the wattage and not trying to overload it using something with a simple like single graphics card, single processor setup. Let's go ahead and wrap this guy up the conclusion, give it an award, and call it a day. All right, so now that we've gotten through all of our looks and our testing, let's go ahead and wrap this guy up. You know, the thing about this unit for Enermax is it's really going to come down to price. Um, the Revolution Duo, the dual fan idea is a, is a really nice idea. In practicality, I don't know how much of a selling point it's going to be. Personally, I think there's going to be a decent number of people who are going to look at modular more than they're going to look at dual fan, even though the dual fan is a nice feature. So when we're looking at this unit, it's, it's got to be about price. So right now I was able to see, I was able to find this guy for, for 90, 97 bucks on Amazon and Newegg. And for a gold rated power supply at 700 watts, it's not bad, but unfortunately it is not great. There is some very, very heavily competing units in the market that are fully modular, gold rated, and even 750 watts that are right there at that same price. And when you're Enermax and you're trying to go up against that kind of competition, you're probably going to fall behind. So I feel like there's just, the Revolution Duo is on the right track. And I think there's gonna be some people who really like this dual fan idea because, you know, cold air and just getting good airflow through there, it's not a bad thing. But in order to really get this unit where it needs to be, I think it either needs to drop about $20 and be in that $80 price range, which will have it competing with a far different bracket of units, and I think will help it stand out a little bit more. Or they need to just really throw full modular cable support on us, and I mean full modular, not even semi. And, and then they could probably get away with this 97 to, you know, right at a hundred dollar price point and still be, still be like right there. So personally, I would say that is the two things. Outside of that, 
and the modular cable, not having modular cables, I still think though this is an excellent unit. I didn't have any problems with it. I stressed it quite a bit and broke it in very well and it did, did, did hold up well. It seems like it runs cool. I am happy with, with the performance on this guy, at least from my limited perspective with the equipment that I have. So all in all, I'm gonna give the Revolution Duo a great hardware award from Pure Overclock. It's still a solid unit and if you really want that extra bit of airflow, then this guy's gonna get you covered. So there we go, first power supply review. You know, if you've got any tips or hints or any questions you want me to answer, let me know in the comments below. And you know, anything I can reasonably accommodate. If you want me to buy a $3,000 tester equipment to, to fully test wattage levels and currents and draws and all that fun stuff, yeah, I, I can't do that, I'm sorry. But if I could, I would. I promise you, I'd love to do that. It'd be fun. But uh, we all can only work with what we have. Anyway, if you like this video, like the review, feel free to like the, well, like the video, subscribe to my channel. I'll probably do that for an eternity. And I will catch you next time.